All right, this is a 1999 Dodge Grand Caravan with a 3.8 liter. So we got the tire off, uh, 19 millimeter bolts, break them loose on the ground, and then you jack it up and uh, support the vehicle securely so it doesn't fall on you. And then you can go ahead and take the shield off the inside here. There's some friction fitting pins. One goes here, there's one up here, there's one up here, and then there's two, usually two bolts. There's little holes right here for 10 millimeter bolts. One here, one here, and the cover comes off. See my 10 millimeter bolts there. And here's the push pins right there. You can see those. So we're gonna go ahead in here. We've got our access to the water pump and we're gonna go, first we'll break free those three bolts. They're 13 millimeter. This particular water pump, hopefully they all have it, has a hole in it. I'm gonna we'll put a screwdriver in there and uh, find a way to brace it. And then when I turn the water pump to break loose the bolts, a lefty loosey like this, I've already broken them loose. You just hold the screwdriver and break them loose. Just break them loose. And then we're gonna get to the tensioner, which is up above there, and we're gonna loosen up the tensioner so we can get the belt off. All right, now the tensioner's right up here. I have a 15 millimeter wrench on it, and one trick is for some leverage, although it does take a little balancing, is to put another wrench on top of it. See how that's done? Like I said, it takes a little balancing. Then you can pull down. Whoa, Ooh, it slipped a little bit there. Pull down and loosen the tension on the belt. So, give that a shot. I think you're gonna find that's pretty Pretty handy tip, and that goes for most anything you're working on. If you want a little more leverage, you can use a wrench, add another wrench to it like this. It's a little balancing act. Don't punch yourself in the face when you're doing this, but we'll uh, pull down and loosen the belt off. Let things loose. You can see this is actually sitting against a little plastic bracket. That's probably all right there. Have the belt off. Let's pull the belt off and we want to get this belt out of the way because when you spill antifreeze, as I'm finding out over the years, when you spill antifreeze on a belt, it'll have a tendency to squeak and make noise and you can't seem to get rid of the noise without replacing the belt. Although, I have a theory that's a little bit time consuming is to take the belt off, wash it with soap and water and put it back on and see if that takes care of the uh, squealing noise, but if you get antifreeze on it, it's gonna make noise. So here we are, I just gotta take our three bolts out. They're still a little tight, but take the three bolts out. Lefty loosey, righty tighty, and we'll take this uh, pulley off. So that's a matter of taking off the one, two, three, four, five, 10 millimeter bolts. A handy wrench, probably get it off with a it's a ratchet, apparently I've been told by the director it's a ratchet, not a wrench, whatever. I get nervous in front of the camera and behind the camera, so I'm gonna uh, lefty loosey, righty tighty. And uh, actually a wrench tells you off and on, on my high tech wrench. It's gonna say, this is a snap on wrench. It's gonna set as a snap on wrench built for, for professionals, but they still think they need to tell me on and off. So we're gonna continue and uh, take the bolts out. And we have a green drain pan down below to catch the coolant. There will be coolant coming out of here. And the other option is to take the lower hose off. You want to drain it first. But uh, I'm gonna give the bolts and crack them all loose and then I'll drop the van down for myself because it's on the hoist. I'm gonna drop it down as far as possible and then I'll uh, separate this a little bit from the engine and let the coolant drain into the bucket.
You can see we got the coolant flowing now. We're just gonna let it drain as much as possible. So we have our new water pump. Just has a large O-ring fits in it. If you feel like it, you can use a little dab of silicone in there just to make sure you tack it in place. Also, we have some uh, adhesive, trim adhesive. We use that, does a good job of holding things in place. Because it's always frustrating when the gasket uh, slips out of place. There's your gasket, it should stay in place without any issues where you're mounting it. See, it wobbles a little bit though. So, we're gonna mount the uh, water pump. All right, so the coolant is out, and we're gonna take out the water pump. That's a good example actually of uh, tacking it in place. You can see a little silicone on there, holding it in place. So want to use a little bit of sandpaper maybe and uh, uh, maybe a razor or a scraper. We'll clean off the material up there before we install our new water pump. We don't want to put any deep, deep gouges in it. That would cause a leak. Some brake clean here, clean it off. Clean. And go ahead and install our new water pump. Make sure you start all the bolts by hand first. All right, the bolts are all started by hand. We can go ahead and tighten those up. If you have a quarter inch ratchet available, you can probably tighten these just fine with a quarter inch ratchet. That actually is maybe better. Can't quite apply as much leverage as a 3 8 or half inch wrench, of course. Torque on this, I don't know if you can see this, 105 inch pounds, which translates to 11.9 Newton meters or 8.7 foot pounds. So really not a lot on this. All right, they're all torqued. I think that's everything you need to uh, do your water pump on your Dodge Caravan. And you, of course, can use the same holes to tighten those bolts, about 21 foot-pounds for the three water pump pulley bolts right there. All right, the belt is back on. And one note, maybe take some uh, water and pour it from above and rinse off all the antifreeze off the pulleys before you put your belt on. As I talked about getting some squeal with the belt being soaked with antifreeze. So we'll uh, put things back together, put the shield on, put the tire on, and then we'll uh, fill it with coolant. All right, then we're tightening down the wheel. Do it in a star pattern. We have a torque stick here, torques it to 100 foot pounds. That's what you want about a nice tire. About 100 foot pounds. All right, so we're at the point of uh, filling this with coolant, a nice 50 50 mix of water and antifreeze. Right here in the old uh, radiator. 
Also, we have a radiator overflow tank. Has a nice minimum and maximum, so we want to fill this up somewhere between the minimum and maximum. We're on the vehicle for about, uh, I don't know, five, 10 minutes and put your vehicle temperatures on hot and the blower motor runnings so you can feel the heat. That should come out in five to 10 minutes. If you don't feel any heat, you should shut the vehicle off and let it sit for just a little bit. <clears throat> Maybe squeeze the radiator hose. If you can squeeze this flat and there's really no pressure in it and you can open up the radiator cap. If you, if you can barely squeeze it, then it's got pressure in it. Although it shouldn't have much pressure after only five or 10 minutes, but you wanna shut it off and uh, try to top this off. There might be an air pocket in there somewhere. So let's go ahead and uh, fill it up uh, with 50-50 mix and run the vehicle. All right, we're in the vehicle to uh, Get the coolant flowing, get it on hot, turn the blower up a little bit, turn the AC off. Get some air coming through the vents here. And we'll just run a little bit and uh, wait for it to get warm, hopefully in about five minutes. Temperature gauge is right there right now. A lot of miles on this vehicle, 300,000 miles, hard to believe. So we'll run this and come back in on in about five minutes and we'll check it. So I'm starting to get a little heat out of here. I don't know if the clock was uh, visible on the camera before, but it says 1010 here now. Getting some heat. And the temperature gauge is moving up. So what we do is we're gonna go for a test drive about 10 miles around a little loop. Make sure all the coolant's circulating, thermostat's open, then we'll bring it back and we're gonna park it. Let it sit for a couple hours and then uh, check the overflow bottle and make sure it's between the full and uh, full hot and full cold mark or between the add mark whichever your jug might say and you'll have done your water pump on your 3.8 liter engine